Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about how to replace primitives with a class, or in other words, how to improve type safety. Now, type safety is extremely important, and it is a topic that is very often completely ignored. What we want to do here in this tutorial is we want to eliminate all operations on values that are not of the appropriate data type. And we're going to do this by protecting the program from bad input. And how we're going to do that is we're going to replace a primitive data type with a class. So let's just jump right into the code. Okay, so what we have here on the screen is some bad code. And all the code's available in the link underneath the video, and of course it's free, and if you get it, it'll help you learn this better. Okay, so what we have here is a type of ATM program, and this is going to be the focus of what we're going to replace in this tutorial to make this more type safe. So this is the focus of the tutorial, is to eliminate the string name state. So what we have here is code that looks pretty good. We have all of this information that is going to hold all of our potential values for state. And then we're going to verify a card, a PIN number, and a balance request based off this information, which would come from a database or something. This isn't the focus of the tutorial. Replacing state is. Then after the user comes in here and slides a card in, we're going to verify that the card number is good. We're going to verify that the PIN's good. We're going to verify withdraw amount is good and down here is where we do it and whenever we execute it you see what you see on the right side of the screen what we're going to do is step by step go through this code and improve it dramatically and the reason why i'm doing this tutorial is i've gotten a ton of questions about type safety recently so i'm going to walk you through the process right now basically the very first thing we want to do here is because we see that state is not encapsulated because we see things like this down here and we do not see anything in regards to get or or set state. So we want to incorporate encapsulation inside of this code. So how we're going to do that is I'm just going to highlight state right now, come in here, go down to source, and I'm going to generate a getter and a setter. So there we go, we got that. And we want to just do the get state and the set state right like that. And we're going to have it show up after state. Okay, so there it is. It's all ready. But we are nowhere near being done yet. Now what we want to do is go through our code piece by piece and replace horrible things like this with good stuff like this. And we're going to do this in a series of steps. So just go through. Anytime you see that value being assigned, we're going to do that. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do that over and over and over again. And we could put all sorts of tests inside of these setters to make sure that they do not enter the wrong information. And that is the reason why we encapsulate our code. So there we go. And there. And that all looks good. Now we're going to set up the getters or get state which is only found down inside of here and there we go and then after we're done with that we want to save it and of course execute it and yes we got exactly the same answer so that's good we want to constantly test as we're making changes to make sure we're not breaking anything then the next thing we want to do is take all this state information we have down here and move it to a separate class all of its own. So I'm just going to copy this for now and I'm going to bounce down inside of here and create a new class. Okay, so what this class is going to do is it's going to represent the state of the ATM access object that we have above. So I'm just going to name this ATM card state because that seems to make sense for it. And then I'm going to create a private final string inside of this and I'm going to give it the name of name because I don't know what else to call it. And then we're going to create a constructor here and it is going to receive name right like that. And then I'm going to go this name is equal to the name that's passed into it. And then because we're going to want to have this information come out as a string, we're going to create the to string method inside of this or function. And we were going to return name whenever it is called, whatever the current value is for it. Then what we want to do is take those type safe constants that we had above and instead have them live in this class so they cannot be impersonated in any way. And how we're going to keep them from being impersonated is we are actually going to create them as objects. 
and the object type is going to be ATM card state. So we're going to replace all the strings with ATM card state, and there we go. And then we're just going to create these as actual objects. So right like that. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for every other one of these guys. Paste those in there, and paste that in there, and close these. Okay, so now all that information is going to be stored inside of there. So we can come up here, and we can delete all of this, because it's in an external area, an external class. And then we're going to define our type save field inside of here. It's going to be that external class, and it's going to be private ATM card state. And I'm going to call it card state, because that seems to make sense. And then I'm going to walk through the whole process of fixing all this. Okay, so whenever somebody calls get state, what are we going to do? We're going to, instead of returning state, we're going to return card state and call to string. There we go. This guy is going to be eliminated altogether. Or actually, let's just go in here and just delete it. And then we're just going to walk through step by step and fix each one of these guys. So for set state, we're going to use card state again. So this is going to be this card state. And this is going to be set to ATM card state right like that. And then we're just going to incrementally keep changing everything here. So down here, whatever we create ATM access bad this is going to still be set state however it's going to be we're, we're going to make a call to anyway ATM card state like that and call that constant and there you go whenever we get down into a verify card going to get the card number passed over inside of it but here we're going to call get state and we're going to check for equality equals and here we're going to pay reference to the external class again. So we're going to go ATM card state. And then this is going to be card entered. Get rid of that altogether. And then we'll call to string on that. So we're checking to make sure that the card was entered. And it was. Now if it was entered, I'm actually going to throw another if statement in here. And check the card number as well. So if card number is equal to and ATM card state card number. Then we know that we have a match for the card number that was entered. As well as the card number in the external class class and under that situation this is a valid card so let's set it as so except let's set it as an ATM card state valid card right like that else let's just copy this we want to set state boink and boink as denied there we are using the external class again and when we come down into the verify the pin number and what do you think we're going to do we're going to come in again and go get state and check for equality equals and inside of this I'm delete that i'm going to go atm card state dot i'm going to again check for valid card and then go to string i'm adding a little bit of extra stuff here to the code that i have in front of me and then i'm going to get rid of that all together so there again we're going to verify that the card is valid if it is we're going to go does the pin number that was passed over equal the ATM card state pin number and if it does then we're going to actually set the state like we have here paste that in there except of course we're going to have ATM card state inside of there and there we go have that all set up and then ATM card state for denied if it is not a match so it's just incrementally walking through and verifying everything then we'll get down into verify withdraw amount and here again I'm going to add a little bit to this so let's just get rid of that and here we're going to go get state equals side of there. I'm going to go ATM card state. I'm going to check that the pin is valid before I check to verify the withdrawal amount because I know the only way that would be valid if the card and everything else is valid. And then if that is set properly, I'm then going to go in and go if withdrawal request is less than or equal to ATM card state. And this one's going to be card balance. So that means I have enough money in the account to take out. And then after that, we're going to come down again, take out the set state. This is going to be set to ATM card state, valid cash request. Otherwise, it's going to be denied. And then we can step down into this guy and check to make sure nothing's changed. So this is still going to be set up exactly the same way 
that's going to be the same, and that's going to be the same, and everything else is going to be the same. So we're not going to have to change any of that code inside of main. And if we execute it, I had a little bit of an error. So I'm just going to come up to line 21 and change that to a double equal sign. And whenever I do this stuff out of my head, sometimes I make a mistake. So let's file execute it. And there you see I got exactly the same results, except now state is 100% type safe because it's only pulling information from that external class. So that is an example of how we can replace a primitive with a class. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.